Hey, welcome back to Gridiron TV. Well, what a match we had this weekend between the Stirling Klansmen, hosted by the Edinburgh Predators. We spoke to head coach of the Predators, Stuart Adam, and also the wide receiver coach of the Klansmen, Ian Lang. Here's what they had to say. Hi, welcome back to Gridiron TV. We're here today for the Stirling Klansmen against the Edinburgh Predators game. I'm joined by wide receivers, coach for the Klansmen, as you can hear. <laughs> Everybody's getting ready to play today. Coach Lang, thanks for joining us. Uh, big preparations for today's game. Are you, are you going in with a lot of confidence? Oh well, always uh, confident about the outcome of a game. I mean, they're a good team, but we're also a good team, and we're looking forward to a good match. I mean, you're going to back of a, a fantastic result against the UWS Pyros last week, and uh, your young quarterback uh, Cam McDonald, his first start last uh, last week, and led the team to, to a massive win. Is, is a team just bursting with confidence at the moment? Oh, I would say, yeah, we're pretty happy with what Cam has been able to do at the quarterback position. You know, well, we think we can do that same thing against uh, the Edinburgh Predators, and we're hoping to have a similar similar score. Yeah. I mean, 4-1 just now. Hopefully, you're confident you're going to go to 5-1 and one today. Um, and we won't talk too much about the big game next week against uh, Northumberland. Let's get this game out of the way first. Where, where do you see this game being won and lost today? Oh, there will presumably be, uh, I think special teams will be really important. I think there's a chance for special teams to make a big play. And then obviously you just got to make sure you cut out any mistakes, interceptions, fumbles, things like that. Hopefully we fall on the positive side of the turnover battle. Okay. Well, Coach Lang, thanks for joining us. We'll keep it brief. I'll let you go and get preparations for the, uh, today's game. Uh, and good luck. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, good afternoon, I'm now joining Stuart Adam, head coach of the Edinburgh Predators. Stuart, thanks for joining us again. <laughs> the second time that in consecutive weeks. You're, you're up against a, a formidable force in, in the football, but you're, you're doing pretty well yourself. How, how confident are you today? Pretty confident. We played these guys the second game of the season, but we've lost players and gained players since then, and uh, we've kind of grown in confidence since our second game I've played against them. Uh, we feel we can beat them today, definitely. Yeah. I mean, you had a good, very good performance in the basketball. I was very personally to watch it, and you, you certainly racked up the score on, uh, on Pete Laird's team. A lot of people expect you to lose that, to be honest. I mean, what what we heard on the on the stands, but you went out and you showed them. We, we we do enjoy that the fact that we've only you know 22 guys today. They've got more coaches than we've got players today. <laughs> uh, we enjoy going up against these big teams. We don't have a big backroom staff or anything. We've only been in the league for three years, um, so yeah, we we like playing against these big universities. I've got plenty of. Your backroom staff to help them and coaches, and yeah, we, we feel we could do it today as well. Obviously, you look at you look at the games coming up in the next couple of weeks. You've got like Newcastle against uh, Glasgow as well, so they're all got to take points off each other. So this is your chance to grab this. Definitely, the guys all know that, and that's what they're they're focused on. Uh, we, we we feel that we we, we can we, we've seen their offense, we've seen their defense, we know who their players are. Uh, we feel we've got the, the guys that can exploit that, especially after the the Napier game and. Uh, uh, the game last week. I mean, there was big uh, promises by Dan Cowan in the last game and also your running back as well, whose name escapes me for the time being. Um, but are you expecting the same again from those two guys? But you, you expect it from every player, wouldn't you? All the players, yeah. We were missing some guys last week, which really affected us. Missing uh, three receivers uh, and our passing game was awful last week. So we've got these guys back and it's sort of got a renewed confidence. Uh, we maybe let the, the varsity game get to our heads and then came in with too much confidence last week. But we certainly focused more this week. It's perfect conditions though, it's, you know, it's, not, it's hardly a breeze and you're doing pretty well. I mean, I'll let you get back and get your guys prepped, Stuart, and uh, I wish you all the best and I'll hopefully speak to you after the game. Thanks, Ben. All right, cheers. And welcome back. Well, what a highlight package we have for you this evening. With the Klansmen and the Predators still in the hunt for a playoff berth in the Challenge Cup, with the varsity winners on a roll and the Klansmen 4-1 for the season so far, here's what the highlight package had to offer. Predators kicked off the game deep in their own half and both teams' defences came out strong, stopping the initial drive from both sides. The tide changed as the Klansman recovered the ball after a fumbled kickoff at the Predators' 10-yard line, leading to the game's first score. Klansman capitalised with a two-point conversion, taking the game to 
Predators fought back with a near miss in the end zone as quarterback Dan Cameron's pass was just out of reach from his receiver. Fans went lead 8-0 going into the second quarter, still anyone's game at this point, but a great run took the Klansman within inches of a touchdown. A quick pass from quarterback Cam McDonald was caught by his receiver taking the score to 14-0. Again as the Predators fought hard to get back into the game with some great movement upfield. Another throw by quarterback Dan Cameron came down to his receiver's hands in the end zone but bounced out for an incomplete pass. He's down a similar place so Predators number 9 crossed the end zone to bring a touchdown score of 6-14. The Predators tried their own two point conversion but the fans were defense too strong. On the Clansman's next drive the Predators held him to a punt but with a high snap saw the ball go over the kicker's head. A scramble for the ball and a rush kick saw the ball land right into the hands of Predators linebacker Ian Berger, who ran him back for a touchdown, scoring 12-14. This time the Predators capitalised their two points to bring the game to 14-all. Going into the second half, both teams had everything to play for. A 14-all game saw both teams on an even playing field. The Klansman's playoff spot guaranteed with a win and the Predators also in the hunt for a playoff meant the second half had everything to play for. Both teams came out hard with the Klansman moving closer to the end zone and looking to take the lead. Number 31 for the Klansman was on goal for a touch to be matched and loses footing just inches from the end zone. The Klansman could not capitalise on the field position and the ball went back to the Predators. Dan Cameron's long pass downfield was intercepted by Klansman linebacker Zaki Maluzzi. The big linebacker ran up 70 yards for a touchdown giving the Klansman the lead at 2014. The Predators were able to stop the two point conversion and the score remained at 2014. Predators did not give up easily though, they only had one touchdown to regain the lead and moving into the fourth and final quarter they were still coming out strong and gave the Klansman defence a good run for their money. And now pumped up Klansman defence came out hard and stopping the Predators dead in their tracks with some big tackles and near interceptions. Finally something had to give and quarterback Cam McDonald ran the ball to the Predators red zone. The Klansman stayed calm 
and took advantage of the field position and scoring a touchdown, giving them a score of 26-14. Again, the Predators stuffed two-point conversion with only minutes remaining. The Predators tried to come back, but the final whistle blew and the Klansmen secured their spot for the playoffs with a 26-14 win over the Edinburgh Predators.